So everything he wrote before the opening of the eyes, where he finally says, I'm the Buddha from time without beginning, and so are you, which if you go back and read it, you'll realize that if you realize it first. First, you have to claim on and acknowledge that you are the Buddha from time without beginning before you actually read it and understand what he's saying, because you'll, you'll read what you want to hear, which, which is what you do. You, that's your mind has a very powerful way of reading what you want to hear, not what is written, written in the text. So he says, from the opening of the eyes on, I'm finally teaching you the truth that I didn't really teach you um, in the beginning. So he says, take all those as my pre-Lotus Sutra teachings, my provisional, my not yet revealing the truth teachings. I had thought that if the ruler of this country desired to govern well, he would summon the priests of the true word school for an open debate with me, and that on that occasion I would reveal a matter of truly significant importance. What was he going to reveal? He said in this year, this is, 19, this is 1250. 1278, he said he, he revealed his true self. He revealed, he accomplished his mission in life in this year. This is 1278, 1279, that, between that year, when the last one I read too. And what is that he did? It wasn't a scroll. No. He was going to do it, he was going to wait for a debate to reveal that. And how was he going to reveal that? He was going to use that encoded language he just used at the beginning of this, this argument, which is people would take in what they wanted to hear and, and not take in what they didn't want to hear if they weren't ready to hear it. Okay, so I had thought that if the ruler of the country desired to govern well, he would summon the priest of the true word school for an open debate with me and that on that occasion I would reveal a matter of truly supreme importance. Before my exile, I withheld that this even from my disciples. So he didn't tell them that he was the Buddha from time without beginning, and they were the Buddha from time without beginning until his exile, because this was the most important part of his teaching, which he couldn't reveal until the time was right. So he, even from his top disciples, he didn't reveal it until after he, he was taken to the beach to have his head cut off, and, and they couldn't do it because the sky lit up. Finally, he said, okay... I'm about to just give you an inkling of what the truth is, and he did that in the opening of the eyes, and then he slowly expanded that understanding to where you'll finally fully understand it in the ones I'm reading right now. And if you didn't, you can go back and read the read the opening of the eyes, and you'll see that it's the same thing he's saying all throughout him, but he's just doing it in different coded language so that people can take it in in slow increments before they get... Because if you give too much people too much enlightenment to a person at one time, they they just fry their brain, and they'll just, they go... Ah! Because the fundamental darkness will come up. And I've done that so many times with people. I've tried to tell them the truth, and they just like go, Oh my God, I'm going to blow up! That's what a, the fundamental darkness looks like. The devil king of the 6-7. Okay, I'm not going to do that today because you guys aren't ready. Okay, I had thought that... Okay, we went to that part. Am I ready to go to... No, I'm going to go a little bit longer. I'm going to go more five or six more minutes. I'm not going to read... Ooh, I'm, I'm almost, I'm halfway through. I'm, I'm just going to, yeah, my body says go ahead and finish. Sorry. I'll go to a commentary on all the things I read in the next installment of this, but my body says to keep going even though I have the program in an hour and an hour and a half. Okay. I, w I withheld even from my disciples for fear that if I should tell them, even in confidence, they might, they might inadvertently disclose it to the true word priests who would then avoid the debate. So if he told his absolute truth, those pre witches would get fucking scared out of their minds and not come. And that's the truth he's going to reveal in this letter and he's revealed in, in the opening of the eyes and he's revealed in the letter I read last, which is a long-ass title and I don't want to remember what the title name is right now. I'll just call that the most revolutionary writing of an Eastern Daishonin. That's my new title. I'm titling it. This is why I refrain from revealing it to each one of you as well. Then, on the night of the twelfth day of the ninth month of the eighth year of Boom A, which is 1271. Well, I was born in 1971, so it was exactly 700 years from the date I was born. Hey, welcome to the new world. Okay. On the 700th day of the writing of this 
Tasunakuchi persecution, I decided to come into the body of the being that was occupying my my mother's womb and, and bring her to the Gohons. And anyway, I was very nearly beheaded at Tatsunakuchi. From that time, I felt pity for my followers because I had not yet revealed this true teaching to any of them. With this in mind, I secretly conveyed my teaching to my disciples from the province of Sato. He secretly. That means you have to read below what he wrote in the opening of the eyes to and actually he there's a few other ones I'll read that he wrote on Sato Island that you will be blown away when you finally understand what he really was saying okay after the Buddha's passing great scholars and teachers such as Mahakashyapa, Ananda, Nagarjuna, Vasubandhu, Tiantai, Miaolo, Dengyo and Gishin knew this teaching but kept it in their hearts and did not express it in words. So, all these other great teachers, Nagarjuna, uh, Ananda, Mahakashyapa, uh, Vasubandhu, Tiantai, Miaolo, Dengyo, and Gishin, all of these are going from the disciples of Shakyamuni all the way up to the current uh, Chinese and Japanese leaders of the Tendai sect. Um, all knew this truth, that we are all Buddhists from time without beginning, but none of them revealed it openly. But Tiantai did, if you actually go back and read what he said, it's very obvious he was saying the exact same thing, but the people weren't ready to understand it, so he said it in a coded language that only those who wanted to understand it would fully understand it. The same way, the coded language that was used in the Lotus Sutra that made all the Dragon King's daughter had to do is hear one word and boom, it unlocked the key to her own enlightenment because that's all it is. It's just a remembering who you truly be. So if you guys remember being in the ceremony in the air, which I do, and I didn't walk out, and if you did walk out, that's okay because you can go back and you can change that now. You can just enter the ceremony in the air, which is right in front of you, which I accidentally, I was making a video today and I was turning my camera and I, I actually showed the ceremony in the air, which I, I don't usually show. That was an accident, but I'm not going to go back and change it because... The universe is on my side. I can't do anything wrong because I am a Buddha from time without beginnings because I'm willing to claim on and acknowledge who I truly be. Okay, so they didn't express it in words. The reason was that the Buddha had forbidden them to spread it, stating, quote, after my passing, this great law will not be revealed until the latter day of the law arrives, end quote. I may not be an envoy sent by the Buddha, but my appearance in this world coincides with the age of the latter day. So here he goes again, the coded language. He says, I may not be the Bodhisattva Jogyo or uh, the true Buddha from time without beginning or whatever you want to call him, but it just happens to coincidentally, I'm the one born in that age and I'm doing everything they said he would do. So... I don't know what that's all about. Okay. Moreover, quite unexpectedly, I came to realize this teaching. So, somehow, he's not that guy, but he uh, somehow realized the teaching. So, here's what it is. The Buddha from time without beginning is your true consciousness. That true consciousness is not confined to your physical body. Your physical body is just the embodiment of you temporarily in this matrix, holographic matrix, it's not a real, this body, it seems real, but my being is way beyond this body, this is just one little, because I go astral project every night, or whenever I want to, I go out of my body, I go to another dimensions, and I, you can go watch my YouTube videos on how to do that, because it's very simple, I've been doing it since I was four years old, and you'll realize that you are so much beyond this little shell that you call yourself your true being. So he's, he's kind of doing this saying, uh, it's not me, the, this body, it's me that's beyond this body, which is time without beginning body, which I've always been, I've always ever been, so he's going to say that, so you've got you to gotta understand the coded language if you're going to want to understand anything he says. Because he was living in a time when you had to code things, otherwise people would just freak out. And they tried to kill him enough times, he didn't want to be killed every single day. It kind of gets tiring after a while. Okay, so, 
Moreover, quite unexpectedly, I came to realize this teaching, which I now expound to prepare the way for a sage. So he says, I'm not that guy, but I'm preparing with what I say now, because this is the secret teaching that was he was supposed to teach, but somehow he didn't show up. Oh, my God. The fifth 500 years happen. All the disasters happen. Everything predicted to happen to this guy happened to me, and I actually got his teaching, but I'm not him. Oh, my God. So you, you got to understand that if you're not willing to realize who he is and who you are, uh, only you are being fooled. Okay. With the appearance of this teaching, all the teachings advocated by the scholars and teachers of Buddhism during the former and middle day of the law will be like stars after sunrise or an awkward apprentice beside a skilled craftsman. It is stated that once this teaching is revealed in this era, the Buddha images as well as the priests of the temples built in the former and middle day will all lose their power to benefit people and only this great teaching will spread throughout the entire land of Janbudvipa. Janbudvipa is the whole planet earth and its biosphere. Since all of you have a bond with this teaching you should feel assured. Okay so he's saying now I'm revealing the truth and this is the teaching that if he would have revealed before the Sato exile, his, no one would have been able to comprehend what he just said. He had to have his head cut off. He did die on Sato Island uh, before Sato, before in Tatsunakuchi, which is actually on the other side of the Japan, um, near Kamakura. He died. He said, I died there and my soul went to, Jap went to Sato Island. So he, he, he resurrected himself. Um, that's what all... Buddhists from time without beginning, they, they do this resurrection things, which Jesus Christ supposedly did, but it was all metaphorical. He didn't really die. Okay. Atsubasa came a long distance to visit me despite her advanced age, but since I was told that it was merely a casual visit on her way back from the shrine of the god of her ancestors. So she went to a Shinto shrine to pray for her ancestors because she was so stuck in the Shinto religion of Japan, which is the cult of Japan, that she only on the way back decided to stop by and gave a courtesy visit to Nichiren. So he says, I didn't even talk to her because that is no way to talk to the Buddha from time without beginning if you don't realize you're it too. Otherwise you wouldn't need to go to a Shinto shrine to think you're going to somehow save your fucking ancestors from... They've already dead. They're not gonna, there's no way to save an ancestor that's dead. Okay, I would not see her. Although I pitied her greatly, had I permitted her to see me, I would have been allowing her to commit slander against the Lotus Sutra. The reason is that all gods are subjects. And the Lotus Sutra is their Lord. So all these ideas of gods are all a myth mythological creation of, like time is, is just a social construct. It's God is a social construct. These are all subject to the true law of life, which is you are a Buddha, I am a Buddha. Wouldn't you like to be a Buddha too? Um, if, so, so he's saying I wouldn't talk to her because she was actually going against that understanding. The reason is that all gods are subjects, and the Lotus Sutra is their lord. It is against even the code of society to visit one's lord on the way back from calling on one of his subjects. So if you went to go see the, the daimyo after going to the samurai guy first, giving the samurai guy all these, these gifts, and then going to the lord and say, hey, how's it going, and shaking his hand, that would have been call for cutting your head off in this time period because you had to understand the rankism of Japanese cult which is uh, what what Japan is is a cult anyway I went into that in a couple videos and I'm gonna go more into that later because all cults are culture all cultures are cults the US is a cult um, everything that's culture is a cult and that's why it's C-U-L-T chur culture because it's cult and you're gonna read a lot more I'm going to read some of the amazing writings of Joseph Shilton Pierce, if you don't understand why. He says, culture is the enemy of biological evolution. Okay, moreover, 
Atsubasu is a lay nun and should have the Buddha foremost in mind. So she's a lay nun. Because she made this and other mistakes as well, I refuse to see her. She was not the only one, however. I refuse to see many others who stopped by to visit me on their return from the hot springs resort of Shimobe. Um, I drove through this hot spring resorts area on the way from my performance in Izu area when I drove from uh, performing in, um, where did I perform? In Yamanashi in Kofu. You go through the mountains, you see the Fuji River and everything, it's really beautiful, and you see Mount Minobu and whatnot. I hate that word, whatnot. I never said that before in a video. I just, that my lesser self's coming out. I never say whatnot. It's a goofy word. Okay, I guess I can be goofy. Okay, I'm claiming my goofiness today. Everything you resist against in a line, or align and agree with or rea react and resist to, you, you lock into place. So, everywhere I said I would never say what not, I destroy and uncreate everything that is times a Buddha zillion. Okay, I'm going longer than I thought I would be doing. Utsubusu is the same age that my parents would be. I feel deeply sorry to have disappointed her, but I want her to understand this point. After you came here to see me the year before last, I received word, true or not, I do not know, that you were ill and I wanted to send a messenger to inquire after you. But my disciples said that, much as they understood how I felt, they advised against it, as it might embarrass you. Therefore, I abandoned the idea. Acknowledging that such is the way of the world, I thought that if you were really ill, you would inform me through a messenger, since you have always been sincere and faithful. I did not hear from you, however, so I myself deliberately refrained from inquiring after you. Although I have been anxious about you all this time, impermanence is the way of all things, but last year and this year, the world has seen such great turmoil that I wondered if I could ever see you again. Just when I was longing to hear from you, your letter arrived. Nothing could have given me greater pleasure. Please tell the lay nun, Utsubusu, about all that I have written here. I would like to explain further about my teaching, but this letter is already too long. So he's gonna. He said, "I'm gonna reveal finally my true teaching." But I'm sorry. I've already gone on long enough. So I'm gonna end it right there because I've already gone along on long enough. And if you didn't already understand the true teaching, he just encoded in the first. See, he's he's only letting you the doorway. It says in the Lotus Sutra. The doorway into the true aspect of all phenomena is narrow and only like it's like the eye of a needle. The <laughs> anyway, the Bible quote, the eye of the needle. I don't want to go into that right now. It's getting late. But anyway, it's a bit the same idea in the Lotus Sutra that the only way to go through the eye of the needle or into this portal that's super narrow is through faith. And so he's, he already did that in this. He already he set the portal there. You want to go through it, you can go back and read what he just wrote. He already said the true teaching, but he's going to tell you, I haven't said it yet. And that's because he's a true wizard. So we're going to go back to the wizardry of Nichiren and Daishonin on the next installment. For now, i got to get ready for my radio program. So call into my radio program twice a week. If you're AM, it's early for California folks, but anyway... 6 a.m. California time, which is 7 a.m. Mountain time. This is all on Sunday. 8 a.m. Central time. 9 a.m. Uh, East Coast time. In, in Europe, it's in the middle of the daytime, and I can't remember. You guys all change these clocks. In Japan, we don't change anything. We don't even change our underwear. No, I'm just joking. But nothing changes. We're still living in the fucking Stone Ages in Japan. We have a little uh, heater behind me that tries to keep this room warm, and it's fucking freezing. Um run by kerosene because we're still in the fucking stone ages here. Anyway, so nothing changes. We don't change our clocks. So you guys change your clocks and every time it confuses me. So I don't want to go through all the times because I can't remember them all in Europe because I don't know who went back or forward or whatever you guys do. 
Um, so that's the time now for Pacific Standard Time <clears throat> or Fall Time. Um, the show is the exact opposite, 12 hour difference on Wednesday. It's a hump day show. For you guys in the U.S., it's your hump day. It's my early, or it's my morning Japan time, 11 o'clock. It's your 6 p.m. at night if you're in California, 7 p.m. at night if you're in the mountain area. Central area, central time zone will be 8 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock for the East Coasters. So, and that'll be too late in, in the European people, so we call in on Sunday afternoon if you're in Europe. So that's, that's the times. Call into the show. If you forget the number, you can remember this way. one oh my axe 2015 which is 1-646-929-2015. Call in at that, those times. Or you can go online and you can wait until my radio program is called. The radio program is called uh, Major Tim to Ground Control. It used to be called From Time Without Beginning, but I was ready to transcend that, that name of my radio show because I started an organization called from time without beginning which is going to be slowly revealing some of the things that you haven't yet been revealed to you on this matrix field on this level of the matrix field it hasn't yet been revealed but I'm bringing it in from my past lives because I won't yet reveal who I was in my past lives but I've now contacted myself in three lives back and possibly four I'm still figuring that one out um, and I'm revealing some stuff that this reality hasn't yet been able to uh, take on and now I'm ready to reveal it so you're gonna have to see what time without beginning releases and that's the organization I'm funding I'm founding but the radio show now changed from time without beginning to major Tim to ground control because I'll get into what the ground control is that's the reality police that tries to hold you back and that's just your fundamental darkness so okay I'll be back at you next time thanks I love you guys and thank you for listening this long